morning. It's 10 past 7 in the AM. We'll go out for a few holes. We'll stop and do a little bit of pitching. That little back of the sole one. Not the leading edge one that we talked about before about the Henrik Stenson style. We're going to try and do a little bit more elevated wedge shot from about 20 yards. Just to understand how the bounce works and there's a drill for that. Come out of breath already. So that was a nice shallow divot there. Don't know if you noticed, no soil came up whatsoever. I had, hold on, 72 yards to the hole, and there was no attempt to hit down on it. There was no attempt to be steep, ball and turf strike. I took it cleanly off the top using the back edge of the club, using the bounce. The bounce is not just for in the bunker. A lot of people think they take this bounce um, to stop the club digging in, absolutely. And that seems to be referred to or related to bunkers more than anything else. I see it more as you spend more time in the grass than you do in the sand. So try and pick a wedge that's got the correct bounce for you. Although you do change bounce impact, you manipulate the bounce angle. So, uh, however, understanding how the back edge of the club's going to work for you is vital. If you can get that right, then we've got much more chance in getting the ball elevated, putting the correct loft on, or a better dynamic loft at impact on the golf ball on the golf club, sorry, and then also more spin, more control on the green. Okay, par 3. I've got 172 yards, I hit 7 iron 170, hoping this will make it. Um, it's just a draw all day long, the, the green slopes from left to right and back to front, so if you can draw it in there, it's going to stop it pretty quickly. If you overdraw it, the green's going to stop it from kicking further left, if you hit in a straight line, hopefully carry the bunker. And if you catch it a little bit heavy like that, that wasn't great. I've actually got away with it, I'm just in between bunker and green. How it's finished up there, I've no idea. I've got a whole selection of wedges here. I've actually left two of them in the range, babe. There's a whole selection of wedges. And I've got to play a shot from the front of that bunker. You can see the ball up and over this little ridge. Then it's flat all the way to the pin. So my thinking behind this is, you've got to run it. I'm just going to take my 50 degree wedge, there's two more lofted wedges in that, but I'm going to take my 50, I'm going to land it maybe 12 feet in front of me, and let it run up the hill.
First one was a wee bit heavier there, used a little bit more leading edge of our plan. Second one was great, back edge of the club, backside, slid across the ground, glided. Glided, is that a word? Glid? <laughs> it glided across the top of the surface, putting the correct loft on, using the bounce correctly, and the result was good. See, I can putt. Right, 108 yards up the hill. Uphill take a little bit extra club because the ball is landing earlier. We'd normally stop, we'd normally stop here, but it's landing here because it's landing earlier. Physics, we take a little bit extra club. I've got, what did I say, 109? Um, it's normally 54, I'm taking my 50. Although it's wet, I actually would take a small wedge, but I've left my wedge, so... <clears throat> Good solid one of these. Should be fine. <sighs> actually pushed that just a fraction because I was trying to force it. I couldn't see me taking two clubs less. I couldn't see me babying a nine in there from a hundred and whatever it was. Nah, that wasn't happening. Right, so I've got a chance to go two under. I've got 58 degrees of loft here and I'm going to play a pitch shot so I've got about 30 yards to this pin maybe not even that and I don't want to make I want to make sure I avoid the club digging into the ground we don't hit down to get again. this spin okay the more right just as a nightmare just tried to film that pitching video up at the 14th green made an absolute mess of it people behind me caught up jumped on to 15 made par tee shot in 16 par 3 hit 6 iron I am, um, hold on, there, 20 feet, got this to go two under, then I'm going to make sure I get this video right. What an absolute disaster I just had. Right, I've got about 40 yard, no, not even that, but a 30 yard pitch shot. And the idea is we want to use the back edge of the club, not the leading edge. I see too many people trying to hit down on this shot to get the ball to go up. So if, imagine if we've got a little obstacle to go over, we want to get the ball up in there. We don't need to hit down on it. That's going to keep the ball low and take loft off. Smack the leading edge into the ground. We need to level out the bottom half of your swing plane or the bottom part of your club arc. Your low point needs to be more below the golf ball instead of ahead of the golf ball. So low point of your swing arc, the low point of the arc more below the golf ball instead of with a full shot we want it yeah we want to head the golf ball with some forward shaft lean we want it away from that here okay so two ways we can do that one is thinking about using the back of the club to strike the ground back of the club strikes the ground that's exactly what we're after club shaft goes back to parallel or vertical at impact then the club head passes the hands so we get the back of the club to bruise the turf that's all very well, but how do we do that? We have to get the body to turn to make that happen. There we go. So body turns, which makes the back of the club strike the ground. Okay, shallowed it out. Back of the club strike the ground. Again, just bruising the turf. Now the greenkeeper's working this green, so this video will happen. It will happen. Break your tee in two. It's easier said than done. I'm hitting in this direction now, so if I put the tee in just behind the ball at an angle, heading towards my target, then another one behind the ball, on front of the ball, towards my target. My idea now is to make sure I can clip the back tee using the back edge of the club. So the back edge, sorry about the noise in the background, screen keepers. Back edge of the club striking the tee, then gliding underneath the golf ball, 
on its back edge and taking the front to you as well as the club head gets back to club shaft gets up to its vertical there we go club shaft vertical then the club head starts to pass the hand slightly and the back edge keeps gliding along the ground and we bruise the turf that's what we're after the opposite of that would be coming down like this leading edge we're going to yeah we'll snap that tee but we'll dig in and we'll take a chunky divot and that's the last thing we want we don't want this forward shaft we want to get to vertical and let the club pass the hands which is going to bring the bounce more into play also if you open the face and lowered your hands it's going to bring the bounce even more into play so open face and lower hands is going to bring the bounce even more into play so all this has to be done with the body turning as well yeah. you can see I'm just bruising the turf there and I've got a sort of 30 yard shot there you go so I'm just going to address behind the ball just hovering it slightly I'm going to come down straight both tees using the back of the club Both tees pop out. If I get this wrong and come down with the leading edge, you'll see the difference in the strike. So they uh, took the divot in there. This hasn't moved because it's bounced back up. So I've chunked it in there. Missed this tee or maybe just clipped that tee. Not great. So you need to glide it. It needs to all glide. There's now somebody on the tee waiting to play. I will get through this video. There we go. So it's a real combination of the two. You need to make sure that the body turns. That's what's going to help the club get to its level. This position at impact instead of the forward shaft lean. Because if we just bring the hands down, then we're going to be there. We're going to be here, so the shaft's leaning forward. Let me like so, so we want to make sure the body turns, which gets the club up to its level or into this vertical position, which is going to bring the bounce into play and more chance of gliding the ball along the ground. I'll play a link to my video I've done before on talking about a longer low point, which might make sense as well. Similar sort of idea, so the low point, the club glides along the ground for longer and is no longer, boom, just in contact with the ground for a fraction of a second. So a combination of the two, getting the body to turn and using those two golf tees to feel what it's like using the bounce of the club for a short shot, that gets the ball up in the air. Angle of attack is a lot shallower, which produces a higher ball flight and there's no need to help it in there. Certainly do not get forward shaftly and do not pop down onto the back of that golf ball. At last, done. There was a point there where I thought that video wasn't going to happen. Just check I've got all my golf balls. Right, I've played seven holes, one under. I'm missing out 17. Greenkeepers up there doing their thing. I'm going to cut across here onto the 18th par 5. Chuck a ball down in the semi rough because that's where my drives normally go and play from there. Although, credit to that Ping G400 Max. It's a fairway hitter. It's awesome, this ball. Bridge stone. 203. 4 iron. 203 yards. I feel as though 5 iron will get there though. Yeah, so the front right of the green is pretty good. Good strike. It's exactly front right of the green as I mentioned. Four iron where they got me up there, but it is, it's just hanging on the front right. Well, hopefully, I've still got that for La Manga. Maybe I'm just front right of the green. But just thinking about this, there's no way I'd have hit my drive that far, having just cut across. So, let's class this as a birdie putt, not an eagle putt. That'd be realistic. I mean, it's wet, it's very heavy, ball's not going far. There's no way I got to drive that far down here on 18. So, this is for four, this is to go two under. Guys, as always, give this thumbs up, this video a thumbs up. Um, thanks very much for watching, and if you've not subscribed to my channel already, do so now.
See that little bell icon? Hit that. Notifications come up immediately as soon as I post a video. Cheers. <laughs>